in order to grow food. Which a lot of a lot of gardeners really like that. They like the ability to not have to use all their potting soil in order to grow seeds. This is a fall garden. So we're starting to get ready for the fall. Planting uh, warm loving crops like okra, beans, cucumbers, peppers, tomatoes. Right now what we're doing is planting uh, bush beans randomly all throughout our beds so that we can fix nitrogen in the beds as well as get a crop from it. Um, we'll also randomly place calendula, marigold, and other flowers so that we can get uh, beneficial insects uh, different types of uh, bugs and stuff that are coming into the system that will help us keep predation down on our crops. We do a really, we do a very, very heavy, heavy mulch. As you can see in some places it's, you know, 6 to 12 inches. That's how deep it is. Uh, we use the mulch for many reasons. Uh, one reason is is to slow down evaporation. We can keep the soil uh, cool, uh, wet longer, so we can uh, keep the moisture in the soil longer. And we can also uh, decrease, minimize the amount of soil erosion, and it also it's carbon, so. We're actually building soil as well with a heavy mulch. This particular type of agriculture or gardening is called synergistic agriculture. Started by uh, Amelia Hayslip who studied under Mosunobu of Fukuoka. And so right now we're kind of getting everything prepared for our crops. Uh, and by preparing the garden beds, getting nitrogen fixing plants in, getting the flowers in, will have a better chance of a successful harvest and planting uh, in the long run because we're actually fixing the nitrogen. And the idea is to not use very many uh, outside sources or inputs so we're going to try our best not to use large amounts of store-bought fertilizers whether organic or not. Uh, we're not using hardly any compost we tested the soil beds for pH. They're at 7, 7.5, so they're almost close to neutral. Uh, we have a lot of other plants that are growing as well. We have comfrey, lemon balm, catnip, wormwood, and little bitty kitties named Cleo. Mm. Uh, we also have garlic growing, which is an allium, allium which helps uh, with insects. We have evening primrose in certain spots that are coming up. Those are all host plants for our, our uh, Japanese beetles. Uh, Japanese beetle loves evening primrose. So as we were weeding all these garden beds, we decided to leave the evening primrose so that we would have more host plants for the Japanese beetles, uh, which we hope to get them away from our peach trees, away from our apple trees, and away from our aronias, uh, which seem to be the largest amount of predation so far. Another nice thing about this type of gardening system is that you have multiple layers of growth patterns uh, along with flowers involved, uh, mints, uh, herbal, med medicinal, culinary herbs, so it kind of all works together in the same system, helping each other out. This is an evolutionary system, so it takes quite a while to take care of the weeds. It takes quite a while to understand how it actually works. It takes a while to have plants ready to go into spots where other plants are coming out. A couple important parts of this type of gardening are that we do not pull our crops up from the roots. We leave the roots in the soil so that the soil organisms, worms, and everything has something to eat, as well as the root hairs the, and the roots 
uh, form capillary systems within the soil, hence aeration, so we don't have to till it. We let the plants till it for us. Tilling of the soil is not good because it creates hard pan. It also disrupts what's called the ethylene oxygen cycle. Uh, this is basically a gas system inside the, it's an ethylene gas and oxygen that is inside the soil. The more and more you open up the soil, the more and more that cycle is disrupted and hence why we have such problems with predation because the pH levels start going up and down dramatically as well as we uh, can lose a lot of the microbial community that's in our soil by constantly opening it up, constantly opening up. This is our strategy here in this temperate climate. We live in a humid uh, climate here. Um, it's not subtropical, but it's close to zone 7. So this is the strategy here. We get dry periods in the summer, wet periods in the spring and in the fall. Um, plus we have uh, fairly good freezes that can help freeze back some of the predators like Japanese beetles. Um, maybe in a dry land situation this, this would work as well, but you would want to go with sunken beds. Um, but for here, what we're using is this method. It takes a long time to develop, probably three to five years to develop this type of system. It's an ongoing system. Uh, some of the other things that we do is <coughs> we plant uh, alliums, basically onions, leeks, and garlic on the edges of our garden beds. And that also helps to bring in uh, beneficial insects and predators. Uh, that's about it. Okay. Thank you. Okay.